Joker Folly Adu kinda sucked, and there's nothing I can do to fix it, but I can fix the Joaquin Phoenix Joker's design and give him an evil comic book makeover. In this video you'll see the step by step process of how I painted this badass big boss Joker and go from this to this. I'll be showing a lot of cool techniques and share some unique tips and tricks throughout the video. So if you too want to paint the Joker like this, make sure to watch this video till the end and don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of my future uploads. Let's go! Hello what's up peeps, this is the Geek Artist back in with another video where we are giving the Joaquin Phoenix Joker a much needed comic book makeover, especially after the release of the sequel, Fall You Do. Did you watch it? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments. So for the Joker sketch, I've used a series of references from the Todd Phillips movie and also from a lot of different comic book versions of the Joker. It's mostly the absence of the suit and the overall colors that bothered me. The first movie was good. But I also felt it was extremely derivative of The Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy by Martin Scorsese. But the sequel did suck big time. Now that we're done with the sketch, it's time to color this bad boy. We have the sketch on this layer on the top. First thing I'll do is set the blending mode of this layer to multiply and it'll stay at the top throughout the process to serve as a reference. Next I'll go to the background layer, select a light grey color and use the keyboard shortcut Alt plus Backspace to fill the layer. And then I'll reduce the opacity of the sketch layer to around 40%. Great. Now it's time for the color blocking. Here's something I like to do in this flat blocking stage to make sure the shapes look smooth and not too crisp. I'll use the lasso tool to create a selection, fill it with a color, white for example. I'll press the Ctrl plus D to deselect and zoom in to show you that the edges of the selection look quite crisp and sharp. Make sure to keep the anti-alias option on. This is the result with 0 pixel feather. Now I'll change the feather amount to 0.5 pixel and make another selection. Fill it with a white color. You'll see that the edge looks much less crisp now. It has a blurry and softer edge. This will come in handy in the later stages. It helps with better blending and shape coherence rather than making things look too crispy and digital or like paper cutout. Cool. Now. In this empty layer, I'll block out the shape of the face. I'll take the lasso tool and select the area of the face roughly. I'll stay away from the boundary areas and mostly select the core central areas quickly. I have a reference image of Joaquin Phoenix Joker opened up here for reference. I'll roughly try to guess the skin color by looking at it. It's a good practice not to directly color pick from reference images. It helps develop your sense of colors. So I'll eyeball it and pick a skin color from the palette that I feel is close to that of the reference image. And then I'll press Alt plus Backspace to fill the color into the selection. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Now I'll use the lasso tool again to make the final selection along the jawline below the ear level. You can even use the pen tool if you're more comfortable with that. But I find the lasso method more intuitive and much faster. An important thing to keep in mind for this step is to make sure that the additive selection method is selected from the top left corner up here. It's the second option from the left. What this does is, no matter how many different selections you make, it retains all of them. But by default, it's usually set to the first option. What this does is, once you make a selection and then you make another one, the previous selection disappears. And that can be annoying. So make sure to keep the second option on while using any selection tools so that all your smaller selections are retained and added up. I can press R on the keyboard to rotate the canvas to make it easier for me to make those difficult strokes with better and more natural flow of my hand. If you don't like how a selection turns out, you can always undo with Ctrl plus Z and retry the selection to get the shape right. If you end up selecting extra areas by mistake, press and hold Alt on your keyboard to switch the selection mode to subtractive. This way you can select and chop off that extra area from the main selection. I'll fill the selection with skin color. Now it's time for the upper part of the face. For this I'll use the brush tool and I'll pick a textured brush, something with a little rough jittery edge. 
I reduced the flow to around 60% to make better use of the textures and keep the pressure options on. And now I'll brush along the hairline so that there's a nice blend between the skin and hair. No crisp sharp amateur shapes. This will make the blending process much easier later on. I'll do this to the rest of the hairline area quickly. Cool. Now I'll create a new layer below the face layer, select a dark green color for the hair and similarly I'll create a rough selection for the hair, avoiding the edges. I'll turn off the sketch layer to show you how the hairline area looks now. We already have a nice blend there, giving an illusion of hair as compared to the sharper edges of the jaw and chin area. Awesome. Now it's time for the face paint. I'll create a new layer above the skin layer. Press Alt on the keyboard and hover the mouse cursor between the two layers to get this down arrow icon. I'll click there to create a clipping mask. Alternatively, you can also right click on the new layer and select create clipping mask from the pop-up menu. But the Alt and click is much quicker. It's a useful shortcut to know. So everything we paint on this new clip layer will stay bound within the area of the base layer with the skin color. Once again, I'll use the last tool to roughly select the white face paint area, mostly the lower part of the face and fill it with a white color. And then select the brush tool and pick a brush with heavy textured edges this time. You can use your favorite textured brush for this or you can download my brush kit from the link in the description down below. I'll keep the flow around 60%, pressure options on and paint along the area of the face paint boundary following the sketch. I'll turn off the sketch layer to show you how organic it looks. Now similarly I'll create another new clipped layer on top of the white face paint layer. Select a blue color that roughly matches with that on the reference image by eyeballing it and then use the textured brush to paint the edges of the blue face paint areas. And then use the lasso tool to select the central area and fill it with a solid color. Now I'll softly brush around the edges in some parts near the eye to give it a natural paint smudge effect. I can also use the same brush as eraser to erase some parts to make the paint blend better. Now it's time for the red paint. I'll pick a matching dark crimson red and paint the eyebrow area. I'll use the last tool to select and color fill the sharp pointier ends of the eyebrows. Some paint smudge effect with soft brushing. And finally, color the paint dripping areas by reducing the size of the brush. Next up, the nose. Sharp selection for the lower part and brushing in the paint smudge effect for the upper part. Easy peasy. Now, for the area around the lips, I'll make a lasso selection first. and then paint in the edges to get that natural paint smudge look. That's the tool again for the sharp pointier ends near the cheek and more paint smudge near the chin. Now for the rest of the body, it's mostly solid hard shapes. So I'll mainly use the lasso tool to block out the shapes on different layers, no manual brushing. So here's a quick time lapse. As you can see, I'm using the iconic purple color for the code to keep it calming accurate. I was never a big fan of the red color they used in the movie. I used bright green for the waistcoat inside, keeping the shirt yellow and the tie blue. Now for the card that Joker is holding, I'll go to the shape tool, click on rectangle tool. And from the properties panel, I'll scroll down and set the value of the corner curvature to 15 pixels. This will make all four corners nicely rounded to mimic that of a playing card. And press Ctrl plus T to free transform it, scale it down and rotate it to fit the sketch. Perfect. Now I'll use the lasso tool again to select the area of Joker's open mouth which will be a solid sharp shape and fill it with a really dark color, dark red, almost black. Then I'll select the area of the teeth and fill it with a dark grayish yellow color in clipping mask mode so that it stays bound within the area of the open mouth. 
I'll open up the lower part of the mouse just a little more. Next up, I'll use the lasso tool to select and fill colors for the eyes and the eyebrows. So here's a quick time lapse. And finally, for the finer edges of the hair, I'll again use a textured brush to paint the finer strands and chunks of hair shapes. There's no need to paint every individual strands of hair. Just the clusters should be enough. Next up, I'll fill the background layer with a really dark bluish gray color for more contrast and so that our fully color blocked Joker stands out. Great. Now that we're done with the color blocking stage, I hope you got to learn a thing or two so far. It's time to move to the rendering stage where things are about to get really dark and serious. I'll start with the face. I'll create a new layer and set it to clipping mask mode above the face layer and set it to multiply mode. Now I'll pick a medium gray color from the palette. This technique I'm about to show you is one of the easiest ways of rendering. If you can master it, there's a lot you can do in a very short time. So do pay attention. With the gray color selected and the layer set to multiply mode, I'll pick a textured brush of my choice, keep the opacity around 30%, flow around 50%, keep the pressure options on, and paint the shadows on Joker's face. Let's say the light source is on the left side and slightly on the top, so the bottom right side of the face will be the darkest because of the shadows. I use the lines I drew in the sketch as a reference guide to paint in the shadows. The reference image of Joker on top right corner is also a great help. Since the layer is set to multiply, it will affect all the layers of the face paint uniformly. I'll keep painting the shadows to sculpt the form of the face. All of this is happening in one layer. It is important to not use a soft brush here. Keep changing the size of the brush to get a nice blend of hard and soft edges. Reduce the size of the brush to paint the finer lines and increase the size to blend softer areas. Now I'll gradually pick a darker grey and paint the darker shadows on the same layer. The form of the face is starting to take shape as you can see. And all of this is happening on a single layer. It's crazy what you can do if you know the right way to utilize certain tools and techniques. The darker grey is good for painting the finer wrinkles on the skin, especially around the eyes. Now I'll use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus B to bring up the color balance tab and tweak the colors of the grey shadow layer. I'll push the sliders towards red, magenta and blue to give a nice purplish tint to the shadow. As you can see the face looks a lot more interesting now. Next I'll create another new layer on top of the shadow layer in clipping mask mode and set it to overlay blending mode. Now I'll pick a bright yellowish orange color and paint some highlights on the tip of the nose and also on the lower lip. I'll paint some subtle highlights on the folds in the chin and the painted red eyebrows. This brings a nice warm color variation to the face. Next I'll create another new layer and paint some bright hard reflective highlights on the tip of the nose and the lower lip. Then I'll erase some parts of it to give it a nice texture. Now I'll paint some shadows on the teeth in clipping mask mode to make him look like they're inside the mouth. And then some highlights. Similarly, I'll use a new clipping mask layer set to multiply mode to paint the shadows on the eyes. Give them a dark menacing look, bloody bloodshot eyes, frantic frenzied lunacy. And then I'll take another layer in overlay mode to introduce some red color in there. Now they definitely look evil. Next I'll create another new layer set to hard light mode and paint some highlights on the eyes. Then some white reflective highlights. I'll make the eyebrows a little dark by painting in some darker tones. Then I'll paint some subtle warm highlights on the skin color part of the forehead. Next I'll duplicate the shadow layer of the face by pressing Alt on the keyboard and dragging the layer down. And it makes the face a lot darker and evil. And I kinda like it. I'll reduce the layer opacity to around 50% and that looks a lot more balanced. I'll quickly add some darker green color on the hair layer to make the head look more presentable. Awesome. So the Joker's face is ready. 
Now you actually know how to easily paint the Joker and make him look evil. Well, at least his face. It's time to paint the suit. I'll more or less use the same techniques for the rest of the suit. Nothing new. I don't want this video to be crazy long so I'll speed things up now until we get to the final stages where I'll add the final touches and use some cool post processing techniques to make him look even more awesome. Until then, sit back, relax and enjoy the time lapse. Alright, so the Joker suit is complete. Now I'll paint some dark vignettes in the background with a textured brush and make the central area behind the Joker a little brighter. Interesting and lazy technique to make your art look cooler and more presentable. I'll add some final bright highlights around the eyes to make the eyelids and other wrinkles a little more prominent. Now, it's time for the hair. I'll once again use a laser tool to make some sharp pointy selection for the shadow areas. I'm mainly following the curvy flow of the sketch as reference. I'll fill in a dark color, deselect and keep the right side almost completely dark. Then I'll brush along the color filled shapes to blend them better. I'll erase some parts of the dark area on the right. Now I'll create a new layer on top, set it to overlay mode, select a bright yellowish green color and paint some soft highlights. Now I'll use a lasso tool to create some hard selections for the reflective highlights on the hair. I'll set the layer mode to hard light. And paint in the bright yellow highlights. Now the hair looks kick-ass. Super easy technique. Finally, I'll create a new layer below the base layer of the hair and use the last tool to make some smaller, thinner selections to paint the finer clusters and strands of hair. And then I'll use the default hard round brush set to 100% opacity and flow 
to paint a few hair strands here and there. This really takes the hair to a whole new level. Simplified and stylized. Finally, I'll paint some skin color on the hair layer to make the hairline area blend better. Perfect. Now for the playing card. I downloaded this cool image of a joker card. I'll bring it in and set it to clipping mask mode on the card layer and transform it until it fits. Cool. Now I'll create a new layer above, set it to multiply mode and paint a dark gradient from below. And some ambient occlusion shadow for the fingers. Now it looks like the Joker is actually holding that card. Next I'll add some highlights on the right side of the face, mainly because I added very strong backlight on both sides of the suit. Now I'll go to the background layer, create a new layer, I select a bright pink color and paint some cool fume effects with the default soft run brush. With the layer set to hard light mode. Then I'll use a textured brush as eraser to erase parts of this fume to give it a finer shape and flow. That looks way cooler now. I'll add some bluish color near the lower part for more color variation. Now I'll create a new layer at the very top, set it to overlay mode and paint some subtle glow near the bright highlights. As if the card is glowing and the joker's face is catching some of the light from below. I'll create another new layer, set it to hard light mode and this time I'll use the default soft run brush to paint some glow around the card. And then some reflective bounce light on the joker's face, mainly on the bottom left corner of jawline, chin, nose and the lower lip. I'll also paint some lines of highlight on the hair as well. And last but not the least, I'll paint some rim light on the outer edges of the hair so that it blends in much better with the rest of the scene. I'll use the default hard round brush to paint some stray hair strands, really thin random strokes with flow to get that craziness and chaotic vibe. Finally, I'll take a new layer above all the hair layers, set it to hard light mode and paint some pink glow around the rim lights. And our joker is ready. It's time for a little post-processing. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus A to select the whole canvas and Ctrl plus Shift plus C to select everything visible and Ctrl plus V to copy and paste it as a new merge layer. I'll double click on the thumbnail of this layer to bring up the layer style tab. Under the blending options, I'll go to the advanced blending and I'll uncheck the R channel. Click on OK. Now I'll use the move tool to move this new layer diagonally by just a couple of pixels. I'll press the down and right arrow around two times and this will give a nice and subtle chromatic aberration effect. Next I'll create a new layer above, press shift plus F5 or shift plus backspace to bring up the fill tab. Then from the contents box, select 50% grey from the drop down and click on OK. This will fill the entire layer with the perfect mid-tone grey color. Now set this layer to overlay mode. Now go to filter, noise, add noise, uncheck monochromatic, choose uniform and keep the amount around 17%. Press OK. This adds some noisy grains to the overall image. More textures. Reduce the opacity to around 50%. And finally, I'll add my insignia and that's it. Our revamped comic accurate Joaquin Phoenix Joker is ready. I hope you enjoyed the video and got to learn something new from this tutorial. If you did, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload my next video. So that's all for now. See you in the next one. Peace.